as to our lecture, as you can easily figure out by the, the very same titles of our lectures, these two lectures are intimately connected. And uh, the first, my lecture is, uh, has a more introductive character, uh, whereas Marisa's lectures uh, is more uh, logically cut. However, uh, in both lectures, there is a recurrent and pervasive character. Uh, that is the general and the, 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 so to say, the character is the general compositionality principle, and in particular, the compositionality principle and how its failure in the, uh, in the quantum world, in the quantum domain, has influenced um, has, uh, and challenged not only physics, but also information theory and uh, logic and logic. So, uh, first of all, a general, some general remarks. One has often observed that there is something paradoxical in the history of the foundational debates about quantum theory. Some basic cons quantum concepts that have been considered, sorry, I just start my, my watch because just to see the, the time, yeah. Uh, some basic quantum concept that have been considered dangerous, so to say, and potentially paradoxical by the founding fathers, Einstein, just to mention one of the theory, have been later on transformed into powerful resources, even from a technological point of view. And entanglement is maybe the most known uh, uh, aspect. An emerging trend has recently focused on the interest in of exporting such, the, uh, such dangerous quantum theoretical concepts outside the domain of microphysics, outside microphysics. And all of these may have a bearing, an impact, an influence, even for general epistemological discussions. Stressing the importance of the concept of information as uh, the as a main character of the quantum formalism has opened new perspectives also to the foundation of debates about quantum theory. Uh, something more general, something general. Uh, again, according to a stubbornly resistant ideology, scientific rationality is essentially bound to a characteristic analytic character. An analytic character which is supposed to be strongly, intimately connected with, by the way, with a general, the general compositionality principle. For example, if you take into account classical logic, such a logic underpins to uh, important has in the on the background two principles: the bivalence principle and the compositionality principle. According to the bivalence principle, every sentence may assume only two values, two, one, or zero, false. And the compositionality principle, defend, strongly defended by Gottlob Frege, the meaning of a compound expression should always be represented as a function of the meanings of its parts. So this is the uh, compositionality principle logically uh, cut, logically explained. But also classical physics is uh, has a, on the background a strong compositionality principle. Consider, for example, composite physical systems, classical physical systems, that are represented by means of Cartesian products. Consider, for example, a composite system here composed by the global system S composed by N subsystem S1, S2, Sn. In this case, the, uh, the state of the global system is given by the tensor product of the uh, states of the components of the subsystems of the global systems. In other terms, the states of the parts determine the states of the whole and conversely. But this principle, I mean, the compositionality principle is important, is on the, back, on the stage, on the background 
not only of logic, physics, but also information. So we we'll consider this, uh, uh, we we'll consider this principle in this different, in these three different domains: logics, physics, and information. In particular, uh, quantum theory, quantum information, have perturbed. Uh, quantum theory and quantum information have perturbed such traditional views based on the compositionality principle, giving rise to a deep transformation of the classical concept, like the, the notion of information. Because unlike classical pieces of information, as we will see later, quantum pieces of information have a characteristic holistic behavior, which is of course opposite to the compositional, to suppose compositional behavior. And this holistic behavior generally violates the compositionality principle. Quantum information has inspired the development of new forms of logic, in particular, new forms of quantum logic that are termed quantum computational logics. And these are the, the subject of our two lectures. And what I'd like to add here is we, in these two lectures, we give some, uh, so to say, some glimpse, the taste and flavor of quantum computational logics. I'm quite sure that many details, I mean, from a mathematical point of view, but also from an epistemological point of view, will be, the, uh, will be treated, will be uh, explored further by in, in the other lecture, especially in, the, in Michael uh, Kufar's lecture. Anyway, in quantum information, this, what is the, the main, the basic intuitive idea of quantum computational logics? What our language is speaking about are now pieces of information that can be stored, encoded by means of states of quantum systems. So the domain of the language of the logic is now re uh, represented by states of quantum systems. So what is the what we call the informational term? First of all, we have the statics of information and the dynamics of information. In the statics of information, we see, we, we introduce how information is encoded, both in a classical and quantum in the quantum world. And then dynamics of information, we see how information is processed, evolves, both in classical, uh, uh, in the classical and the quantum domain. Classically, physically, a bit in, 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 the, in the classical world can be implemented as a physical system which can be prepared in one of only two different states represented to logical values, zero and one. And the register is just a finite string of bits. A register of n bits has two to n possible configurations. It seems to be a quite trivial observation, but it is not so trivial when we introduce uh, quantum uh, qubits, the quantum analog of bits. So, for example, if you have uh, a register if n is equal to 5, then you have the, these uh, uh, 32 registers, uh, which are defined in the, usual, in the usual way. Now, the dynamics of classic, the classical dynamics in of information, how information is processed classically and irreversibly. So these, are, these two adverbs are essential, classically and irreversibly, because we'll see in a, few, in a moment, in a, few, in a few minutes, that the classical information can be processed also in a reversible way. But irreversible, classical logical gates are the tools that transform bits or registers into bits, in particular not, and, or, the exclusive or, NAND. From a purely, uh, uh, from a purely <coughs> functional point of view, we can define a not as a function, a not x uh, equals to one minus x, x and y belongs to the domain, can be only two, assume only two values, zero and one, the uh, conjunction and x and y is just the product of the so-called logical product or, or Boolean product of x and y. The or is the, the sum of x and y minus the product. The exclusive or 
it just uh, is defined by this uh, formula you can see here and this is what is called the sum modulo 2 which is equal to 1 if and only if both x and y are distinct are different and then we have the net of x and y which is the negation of the boolean of the boolean end so we have as usual uh, you have the different aspects different phases of the same concept i mean a sort of a different implementation of the same concept logical concept they're not as a function they're not as a truth table uh, as it usually is introduced in logic and they're not as a suited the not suited in computer science and and of course the same the, uh, the product the truth table of the uh, conjunction and the, the end circuit here again for the all with different symbols just to fix the symbols here the all circuit the exclusive disjunction exclusive the ver the latin bell so and we use this symbol that we do would be also used by Marisa Della Chiara when we present the language of quantum computational logic and so on. And then end again with these three different aspects. Yes, what is the point? The point is that here, if you consider these three sets, the two element set not end, the two element set not all, and the singleton of end, all three sets are functional universal. What does it mean, functional universal? Functional universal means that any other possible classical logical gate can be conveniently expressed in terms of the not end, if you have not end, of not or if you have as a primitive, not or, or and end if I have end as primitive. Functional means in a purely functional way, in a purely analytic way. For example, take an end and not as primitive, then by means of the well known De Morgan law, you can define the or as the negation, uh, the, the not of uh, the conjunction of the negation of the two elements, and so on. If you take all or not as primitive, you can define end. And if you take end, you can define in a very inconvenient way, in an economical way, also the negation here, because you see, if you have end, then the negation of X is a sort of binary, is a binary operation, because you apply end uh, to X and X. So, but the point is here that classical logic Logical gates are generally irreversible. All are irreversible except except the negation. What does it mean that they are irreversible? It means that they are not good, that they are not one-to-one -one functions. In other terms, given the output, you are not allowed to recover in a unique way, univocally, the input. For example, if you take the zero as the output of an of a conjunction, then you have three possibility uh, for the for the input: zero, 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 one, one, zero. So it's a many-to-one Boolean function. Of course, uh, only the of uh, the the uh, negation is uh, uh, a one-to-one -one function, but. Uh, is there any connection between logical irreversibility, in other terms, the failure of the one-to-one -one correspondence, and irreversibility in a physical uh, sense? Yes, and this was pointed out, was emphasized in the 60s and the 70s by Landauer, because Landauer in this in these decades uh, was able to find a strong connection between logical reversibility in terms of one-to-one -to -one, uh, to one correspondence and physical reversibility. We prove that they are intimate, intimately connected. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, just to be short, the Landauer principle describes the so-called Landauer limit, that is the minimum possible amount of energy required to change one bit of information. 
And changing one bit of information means uh, erasing. So, uh, our classical computers dissipate energy, consumes power, just because they erase bits. So, in other terms, uh, in the opposite, uh, if no information is erased, computation in principle may be achieved in a thermodynamical reversible way and without any release of heat. So what is the, 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 so the end of the story, the, the moral of, uh, of Landauer's principle? That to be physically reversible, computation has to be logically reversible. In other terms, logical gates must be one-to-one -one Boolean function. If you want to, if you, if we hope to build uh, com computers without any this, without without or with very uh, a low uh, release of heat, a consumption of energy, the logical gates must be one Boolean one to one Boolean function. So the the question natural why arises whether it's possible to make reversible an irreversible Boolean function in, in a classical world. And the, the idea is really, is really simple uh, or in some sense trivial. Uh, the, the intuition is that if you increase the dimension of the computational space, then you can transform uh, any uh, irreversible classical gate into a reversible classical gate. And what is the trick? The trick is to be reversible, the output should be track store the input. This is just only for cardinality reason, because if you want to have a one-to-one a one-to-one -one, um, one -one correspondence Boolean function, the cardinality of the input of the input set has to be the same cardinality as the uh, output set. So, and there is a theorem which is uh, was proved by uh, Toffoli, but which is very simple. Say that every irreversible many to one Boolean function f from the from the uh, the Cartesian the m Cartesian product to the n Cartesian products and n and m m n can be different. For example, m is two uh, n is one in the case of the n conjunction can be transformed into a reversible one to one function f hat that leaves in this. Uh, 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 in this domain, which is just the n plus n Cartesian product zero one into the n plus n Cartesian product zero one, in such a way, you see, you have f hat, you have the blue vector, and the blue vector is the what we have in mind. The the uh, the, the idea is that the blue vector is the input, and uh, the, the, the 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 target the control bits, and the red vectors and the red is the uh, other control bits it is equal to x1 to the blue vector so you keep track of the input and then you have here the value of the function and you apply the XOR component wise to the other elements of the target bits just it's, it's simpler than uh, uh, it appears here just a concrete example consider the irreversible end here what is its uh, uh, reversible counterpart? Its reversible counterpart is, uh, is a Boolean function T, I call T, and it will be clear why I call T, from the uh, uh, Cartesian product, from this Cartesian product, two plus one, to this Cartesian product, two plus one, such that if we apply this T to X, Y, Z, X and Y are the input, the control B, Z is a target bit. Now the term is the bit that carries over the, the value of the application of the function to the blue the bits. It is equal to X and Y. You keep track of uh, X and Y. Then you, can, you, you uh, have here the product of the, the function. You apply the function here, X dot uh, 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 Y, and then you apply the XOR to Z. This is called, this, uh, um, this gate is called the Toffoli gate, or control, control, not what discovered by Toffoli 
in, at the end of the 70s, the first years of uh, that. So this is a truth table of our software. Why is it called control control bit? Because in the first six cases, it leaves everything unchanged. It does nothing, nothing. Only when the control bit are both one, then it flips the target bit. One, one, zero, one, 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 zero. This is the action, the truth table of our Toffoli gate. So, what about universality of reversible uh, uh, connectors? Classical reversible logic differs in one significant aspect from classical irreversible logic in that two bit logical gates are not sufficient for universal reversible computation. But the point is that if you take the Toffoli gate, then the Toffoli gate is functionally universal in other terms. You can express any other possible uh, reversible gate in terms of a convenient combination of Toffoli gates. In particular, if you have end, this is very important. If you have end, what is the end, the reversible end? Is Toffoli applies to X and Y once we have fixed the target. Roberto. Si? Uh, sorry, there is a moment. There is a question by Richard. Yes. Uh, you know that the rule is that clarification question uh, can be yeah. made during the conference. So, yeah. Richard, I ask you to, to say something to Roberto about uh, yeah. your point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Richard? Okay. Yeah. Go on. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, we, we, we listen to you. Richard? I cannot hear you. Ah. Can you hear me now? We can. Uh, yeah, not, not, very, not very fine, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I wrote the question in the chat as well, but I can try and explain it again. Uh, that works. Um, basically, I was asking, with regards to reversible computation, you mentioned um, minimum heat loss to reversible yeah. uh, computation. Yeah. But ultimately, as far as I understand it anyway, if you're going to have an input and then you perform some reversible computation on it, fine, okay, that's, ma that's optimal. But if you ever want to run that computation again by changing the input, you're going to have to forget all the elements that you put in. Otherwise, it's just one thing you ran once, never, never to be used again. So ultimately, it would seem like all that saved energy you actually throw away when you try to use it again. Yeah, uh, uh, you are right. Uh, thank you. But this is, yeah, this is, as I, as I, I told you, this is in principle, <laughs> this is an in principle uh, without any heat of energy. But then you have the garbage, as you said, uh, uh, and the garbage is, uh, needs energy. And so it's, uh, it's impossible. So, uh, because if you want to use, uh, uh, if you want to use the, the, the uh, you, if you don't want to erase the garbage, uh, then <laughs> you need you need energy. So it's reversible in principle, but I think in the implement this is the reason why we don't have uh, an, a computer that doesn't that, that without any uh, energy consumption, any power consumption. This is just the the, the reason you said. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. So so now we have this end. Then we have the end. Uh, just Toffoli, when you fixed the, 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 the last element to one, and the knot, this very strange knot, because it's a ternary, uh, is a an, completely uneconomical um, uh, conjunction, Toffoli applies to x, x, and uh, y. For example, let us see the truth table of our reversible end. The truth table is Toffoli, one fixed, the target bit to zero. So zero is fixed. Then you have end of x and y, 0, 0, 0, is the, 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 the application of Toffoli leaves the, this unaltered, completely unaltered. When it, it acts only when you have, it's a control, control bit, only when you have to have as, uh, 1, 1 as control bits, whereas the input is 1, 1, then Toffoli flips 
the target, uh, the target bits, which it becomes what? And this is the truth table of end. Very simple. Now, if there is our, this is uh, just a brief uh, introduction to classical uh, logic and classical information. But what happens in, in the quantum world? Uh, basically, bits are replaced by qubits and more general by mixtures, that is, uh, states of a physical system uh, that, are, that may be, that, that, that uh, don't need to uh, be pure. So the the starting point is, is uh, uh, the uh, the notion of the starting point is of is that of qubit, the a quantum analog of uh, classical bits, and I'm quite sure that uh, uh, Michael uh, Kufaro uh, will explain much better than uh, than I. From a physical point of view, we see that what is a a, a, cl a classical bit, a qubit physical system. And here there is a subtle distinction between qubit physical system and qubit. A qubit physical system is a system, while a qubit is a state of a physical system. So, first of all, a qubit physical system is a physical system that may assume two basic states in this strange notation, which I will call cat0 and cat1. This is Dirac notation, which I explain just in a few in a few seconds and any possible superposition thereof of these two so this is a classical bit zero or one the quantum bit qubit zero cat zero or cat one of any possible superposition thereof i will say what does it mean uh, superposition in a more detailed way here so qubits systems qubit physical system uh, can be considered, for example, if you want to have photon qubits as uh, polar polarization encoding, an horizontally or vertically polarized single photon represent the logical uh, value 0, 1, respectively, or the path encoding. So these are phys qubit uh, physical system photonic. In atomic qubits, you have a uh, you have um, here uh, an, an, an electron, which can be in the ground state zero or in the excited state one. And if you have a light pulse of appropriate intensity, then you transform any uh, the, the physical system, which is in the ground state or in the excited states, into a possible superposition of these two uh, uh, of these two states. And then we have our uh, the, the the leader, <laughs> the very very trendy uh, qubit now, which is the transmons, uh, transmons or the so-called large atoms or called artificial atoms, because these are not natural atoms. This uh, transmon is a type of superconducting charge qubit that what designed to have reduced sensitivity to charge noise. Uh, shortly, I, I, we, we can call it a superconducting qubit, a superconducting view, and it, which is the main component, I mean, the, I mean, yes, the main component of this so-called noisy intermediate scale quantum computer, or the so-called near term, that is quantum computers that are meets, that have uh, noise, but not enough. For example, in here, uh, you can see here the, the quantum computer, the IBM quantum computer, uh, or you have the Sycamore, the Sycamore Google, or Rigetti, and so on. I'm not paid by IBM, I have to say, to, 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 be, to be true and, and honest, but I use IBM <laughs> very often. Now, formally, from a mathematical point of view, what is a qubit? A qubit is just a unit vector a vector of length one of the bidimensional complex Hilbert space C2. So it's a, a vector of this kind. You have psi, you have the cat zero and cat one. What cat zero is the column, this column vector, cat one is this column vector, and then you have two amplitudes, in other terms, two uh, complex number 
such that the sum of their square models is equal to one. But if you if you want to see just a simple, a very simple example in, uh, uh, for example, in R2, consider, consider uh, a bidimensional space here and consider for here and here, this is R2. And uh, so we have here uh, our cat zero and here we have our cat one. When we have a, uh, a vector psi here, such that psi is defined as cosinus x cat zero plus sinus x cat one. And of course, you know that, that cosinus is x plus sin is equal to one. This is, uh, this is uh, accurate. This is accurate. It, it, it's just a superposition of cos, uh, cosinus x and sinus x. Yeah, so uh, now a qubit, therefore, psi, can be thought of as an epistemic state that stops to precise pieces of information in parallel, in parallel, the real parallel. The two information are the classical one, cat zero and cat one. Unlike the classical bit, which is, which is rigid, only one or two, the qubit permits us to represent two precise pieces of information. And when I say two precise pieces of information, I refer to cat one or cat zero, to represent two precise pieces of information in parallel. In parallel. So, uh, consider now uh, a composite quantum system. Uh, what, what does it happen? We, as I mentioned, uh, as, I talk, uh, as I said uh, uh, before, in the case of classical system, the basic ingredients to, increase, to model composite classical uh, system is given by the uh, Cartesian product. Now, what happens in the quantum system? Consider this composite system S, S1 plus S, composed by S the N subsystem, and let H1, Hn, the Hilbert spaces associated to the physical system S1, Sn. For example, in the simplest case, uh, S1, Si may be C2, the complex, the bidimensional complex is the two. Then the Hilbert space associated to the composite system S is just the tensor product of H1, Hn. And I will denote it by this red. Uh, uh, Hn. N is not the dimension because the dimension in the case of Si is C2 is the dimension is uh, 2 to the n is a tensor product. So tensor product described composite quantum physical system. And the transition from Cartesian products to tensor products is the main mathematical tool for the T-deep quantum conceptual change. For example, it's just is the uh, is on the background is the uh, the main uh, the main aspect of the so-called entangled state. But consider because a crucial property of a composite quantum system S is that there are states S that cannot be expressed, factorized. We say also factorized as tensor product of states of its subsystems. And these states are called entangled. So an entangled is such that if psi is a, a state of the, of the, of the composite system, is always different from a, a phi 1, phi 2, in the, for example, if S is equal to a, a bipartite system, it's impossible to express the psi as a factor, as a tensor product of these two elements. According to the quantum theoretical formalism, any possible state rho of the composite system S determines, of course, the state of each subsystem Si. And these, uh, these states are uh, indicated by red i rho. Red i rho is called the reduced state of rho with respect to the i subsystem. So, for example, in this case, 
is, is this is the S1, this is S2, this is the composite system, this is red 1 or S1 and red 2 uh, here. Uh, now we have the qubit, and what is the counterpart of a classical register, quantum counterpart? Is so the, uh, the, the notion of Q register, that is a unit vector, a vector of length one, of the n fold tensor product complex Hilbert space uh, 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 C, uh, Hn. So Hn is the tensor, the n fold tensor product of the C2, where qubits live. Which then the dimension of this uh, uh, space is uh, 2 to power to, uh, to n. And uh, so now, and what is the basis of these new spaces? The base where Q register lives is the, uh, is the, tensor, is the tensor product uh, of, the, of, the, of the bits. For example, if you have the computational basis. Hn of, uh, let me say, n maybe 3 and so on, let me fix n to 3, for example, then you have a Hilbert space, a complex Hilbert space of dimension 8, and the, the basis, the computational base of the standard basis is given by x1 tensor product xn, where xi may be a, 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 may be a qubit 0 or 1. So, cat zero, cat one. So, if n is equal to one, then we have this. We have C two. If n is equal to two, then the basis is out. Oh, sorry. We write in this way, or to be in a more concise way, in this way, uh, uh, deleting the, the the tensor product symbols here. Cancel. So, in the case of n two. We have a four-dimensional uh, uh, complex in the space, zero, one, zero, one, so, sorry, one, zero. There is a, uh, oh, yeah. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. If n is three, and so on, we have eight elements, and so on, and so on. So, a classical register now can be recovered, classical bits, as element of this form that, that have this simple form x1 xn where any xi uh, is 0 or 1 so in other terms you see here that uh, you can uh, you can stock you can stock uh, classical information also make a quantum world is that is a little bit masochistic but you can do that here so a q register is a unit vector of the space that represent, uh, uh, in physical sense, a possible pure state of a quantum system. So a qubit is a uh, is a is a state, a pure state of C of a quantum system uh, of by dimensions quantum system. A Q register is a possible pure state of a of a composite quantum system. Now, uh, a Q register. What is it? The, the point is that the cube, one qubit allows us to store zero and one simultaneously, just because any qubit has this form. So you have zero and one in parallel. Two qubits allows us to store four binary numbers, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one simultaneously. The elements of the basis of the computational basis, three bits, eight number, and so on, and fifty-three qubits can store these huge numbers simultaneously. If the the choice of fifty-three is not uh, uh, random, it's not uh, it's not ca uh, casual because uh, uh, this is the numbers of qubits of the Sycamore Google of the Google Sycamore. I think, to be honest, that they is composed by 54, 54 qubits, but at that time, one bit uh, failed. Uh, was, <laughs> it, 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 did, it didn't work, so 53. Now, for example, 300 qubits can store more than 10 to the 90 numbers simultaneously, and this is more than the number of atoms in the visible universe. 
So any Q register psi determines a projection operator. That is an operator that assigns to any vector in H and a vector in H N. That intuitively, this vector project any other possible vector phi onto the line, the subspace span by uh, generated by this Q register. Now, Q register are pure state of, uh, uh, of uh, quantum information. In other terms, they are maximal pieces of information about the quantum system under investigation. It's all we know and then we cannot, uh, and we cannot know uh, something more. But more generally, a piece of quantum information and information may correspond to a non-maximal knowledge about the quantum system uh, uh, at issue under consideration. That is, maybe, a mixed state, a mixture, which is mathematically uh, defined as a density operator. I don't want to define in details a density operator, just to give a, an idea. What is a density operator? What is a mixture? A mixed state is just, it's just a convex combination of possible pure states. So you have rho, a mixture, is just uh, a combination of pure states, and these are the weights uh, which they are combined. So it's a sequence of possibly real number summing up to one. Summing up to one. So it's it's you 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 can see here if you adopt the non the un, the untenable uh, uh, interpretation of uh, mixtures uh, the ignorance as ignorance. You can say that a state is. Uh, uh, any uh, physical state is in the state psi, psi i with probability w i. But this is untenable, just to give a very, very uh, uh, approximate uh, uh, intuition. Of course, any Q register corresponds to a special case of density operators, that is the projection determined by psi. Now, a re register represent the classical pieces of information, as I already said, in a quantum computational framework. The two elements, uh, cat zero and cat one, of the canonical basis, represent the quantum version of the two classical bits zero and one, which in a logical uh, jargon, we can say that the two classical two value falsity and true. So cat zero falsity and cat one true. For logical aims, it is useful to represent truth and falsity as properties. That is, special examples of projections of a space. So, uh, to do that, we distinguish true from false registers. Consider a register of length n here. When this register is called true, when its last bit xn is one, is the cat one. Why the last cat, the last, uh, the last bit? Because the intended meaning of uh, the definition that we are uh, concerned only with the last bit, because the last bit conveys, um, carries over the results of the whole computation, of the of the sequence of the computation, and it's called false dually when the last bit is equal to zero. Then we can. Uh, consider, define uh, the set of all uh, two register, and the set of all two register determines a subspace and therefore a, a projection. And it's called the truth of the subspace Hn. So P1n is the truth, is the truth projection, and the falsity projection dual. For example, just in the simplest case, in the simplest case, Truth and falsity in C2, the truth projection, the truth property is represented, is represented by this matrix. And the false, pro, uh, the false, uh, uh, the false <coughs> uh, projection is represented by this matrix. Then you can extend the notion of truthness and falsity to, uh, for example, to um, C4. To, the, to, to C2 tensor C2, just take as a first component the identity and the second component P1, 
just because we, I remind you that we are interested only in the last part, in the last uh, uh, bit, which is uh, carries over the results of the computation. And this is the matrix, and so on, and so on. And this is the falsity. And so on. The point now, the crucial point to develop our our logic is that uh, you can you can apply the Born rule in order to determine the probability that a piece of information satisfies the truth. A piece of information is uh, uh, a piece of information is a state, is a quantum state, a qubit or Q register. Uh, so a, a density operator. Take a density operators, in other terms, a piece of information. We define the P row as a trace of the composition of rho with a truth property. What does it mean intuitively? P rho is just the probability that information encoded by the by rho, by, the, by, by rho is true. Is true. This is the, the definition. For example, if the simplest case in C2, take a qubit uh, of this form, what is the probability of psi? Is the is just the square modulus, it is the is the square modulus C1. Uh, okay. In particular, if C0 is equal to C1 is equal to 1 over square root of 2, then we have that is the truth, the probability of, of the of this quantum information is one half, just because we have the perfect undetermined uh, qubit uh, state. Okay. Now, how information is processed? Uh, how information is uh, uh, processed it and evolved? Uh, information evolves uh, by means of is a dynamical evolution, and we know that dynamical evolution in quantum mechanics is governed by Schrödinger equation, and the Schrödinger equation can be represented as unitary operator. And as is well known, unitary operators are reversible transformation. In other terms, are, you have operators that we apply this operator to the adjoint of the operators or to, in case, to the inverse of the operators is equal to, if you apply to the inverse of the operator to you and you obtain the identity. So you can get, in other terms, for intuitively, you can go back and forth and back, back and forth without uh, uh, nothing changed. So this is means that reversible. So a unitary operator is a one-to-one -one function of reversibility notion that preserves the length of the vectors. So the left, so if the vector is a unit vector in input as an input, then you have a unit vector. For example, any permutation of the computational basis, you take computational base and you permute the first row with the second row, this is a unitary operator because you, if you apply you to to you uh, <coughs> to that to the adjoint of you, you you get the identity operators. Now, uh, quantum information so is processed now is processed by quantum logical gates, which are the quantum analog of the classical gates. And quantum logical gates are special example of unitary operators that transform pieces of quantum information states in a reversible way. Something, so you see, it's the, the origin of, of the logic of quantum computation is just the opposite of classical logic. In classical logic, the classical logic is uh, <laughs> born on an irreversible basis, of course, then uh, in the 80s becomes reversible. Here we have just the opposite. The quantum logic is, is intrinsically generally reversible. Now, if you have a logical, logical gates are applied to vectors, are linear operators, but you can extend uh, these operators to the class of all density operators uh, in such a way that if you take G is any gate, okay, G, so G is a vector from, is a, a, an operator from HN to HN, then you extend uh, G to the density operator in this way. You apply this operator dg 
to an output operator, to a density operator, to a mixed state, uh, and it's just the composition of G, which is the original gate, applied to rho, applied to the adjoint of G. Now, some examples of gates that have special computational and logical interest are the NOT gate, the XOR gate, and the Toffoli gate. And uh, we see in red the Hadamard gate. Just to give an example in the definition, the NOT gate of the space C2 is defined for any element cat zero the canonical base at not zero cat zero is equal to one and not one is equal to zero and this is the matrix of course once you have once you have defined the vac the, the the operators on the base of the computational basis then by linearity you can apply your uh, operator also to any generics psi just because of the linearity of not so, and you can extend not to uh, other, uh, to more, uh, to complex, uh, to, for example, to uh, four dimensions and so on and so on. The XOR gate is defined uh, very exactly in the same way as defined in a classical, uh, in the classical case. What is the XOR excluded or X and Y? Uh, I remind you that X is the control bit and Y is the, uh, is the target bit. Is a control not in the sense if x is zero, then, it, it, uh, then nothing happens. If x is, is uh, one, is one then, uh, then we have that the result is one minus uh, w. Okay. And this is the matrix, you see. Nothing happens the first case, nothing happens here, then you shift. Zero and one and one with zero. So so one zero is one one, and so one one when both are one, the result is zero. But one of the most important, uh, of course, you can imagine why uh, uh, quantum gates is the Toffoli gate. Just not, not just because Toffoli gate is classical universe, and it has this direct, straightforward. Uh, uh, Generalization, the generalization to, to the quantum case. So a Toffoli gate, the simplest case, is a ternary operator. You see here, apply C2, C2, C2. Uh, this means one refers to C2, one C2. So this means H1, which is equal to H2. And this is defined in the following way. We call the X and Y are the control bits, and Z is the target bit. So, if uh, Z is zero, then take uh, as the target bit the conjunction, the product, the Boolean product of X and Y. If Z is one, uh, you take the NAND, one minus X and Y. So here you can see it's quite interesting. The Toffoli gate is a sort of weighted sum of and and not of and and mend, sorry, of and. So is end when the target bit is zero, is nand when the target bit is one. And this is the matrix. Six, uh, okay, the first six rows unchanged, and in the seventh and the eighth rows, you flip the red elements here. Of course, they can be generalized to, to the dimension of space. Now, what is the point. The Toffoli gate has a special logical interest in, since it allows us to define a conjunction, this is already in the, in the classical case, that behaves as a reversible operation. But in the classical case, you know, if you, if, if you take registers, you have Cartesian product. So you, you have uh, the input uh, of uh, and can be on, is given by two distinct elements, X and Y. But refer now to the space, the simple space, C2, tensor C2. And, as, and let us consider Psi, let be, Psi be a Q register of, of uh, this composite system. For, ex for example, Psi can be thought of as the pure state 
of the composite quantum system S1 and S2. Here, please notice we apply the conjunction and to psi. So and here becomes a unitary operator because psi belongs to the domain. The domain of the application is the C2, tensor C2. But psi is a, a general, uh, is a, a, a generic state of C2, tensor C2, and is given by the classical trick, is the Toffoli of psi, once we have fixed the ancilla, the target bit, to zero. And the, okay, and, uh, but this is, uh, which is, uh, uh, this situation is impossible in a classical case. Because in a classical psi, if it's, if, if it's the state of a composite system, has the form of a Cartesian product, is a sequence of two elements. But here, since psi, since the tensor product is not the Cartesian product, you, have, you may have a state psi that cannot be decomposed, that factorized as a tensor product of two elements. And it's just what the, the point here, what is interesting. Take again. Uh, an entangled state that is a state psi is a state of c2 tensor c2 state s1 state s2 so psi is uh, is the state of composite system and suppose that psi is entangled okay not factorized now the conjunction of uh, and is applied over a global piece of information psi and not to the two conjuncts distinct, the two reduced states of psi, because you have S1, S2, and this is the reduced state and the reduced state here. So this is the point. The quantum computational conjunction gives rise to a characteristic holistic behavior deeply rooted in the holistic features of the quantum formalism. Let us consider, for example, the entangled Bell state, the so-called Bell state, of a composite system S1 and S2. The Bell state is formed in this very simple way. is 1 over, over the square 2 of 2 of the cat 1, 1, and 0, 0. So, if you what, write here is... Uh, the vector is 0, 0, 0, 1 uh, vector plus 1 square 2, 1, 0, 0, 0. As you can immediately see, the state cannot be factorized. So, in other terms, it's impossible to express Bell as a tensor product of two qubit of uh, living in uh, the state in the first uh, system and the second living in the second system. If we apply end to Bell, then this is uh, Toffoli by definition, by the very definition, Toffoli applied to Bell and the ancilla fixed to zero, and the result is this zero, 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 one, one, one. And this is a pure state. Is a Q register of the of this space of the eight dimensional space. But what happens we if we consider the conjunct, so to say, is not the right word, but that is the reduced states of the states. Let us consider the reduced of the Bell state on this first subsystem and the reduced states on the second subsystem of Bell, that is the states of the subsystem S1 and S2. It turns out that both reduced states, both the reduced states, are one and the same proper mixture. They are not pure states. And in particular, they are the completely mixed state, which is uh, the one half of the identity, which is the perfect mixture, the perfect mixture, the completely uh, maximally mixed state. So you start from a pure state, the Bell state, which is the composite, uh, which is the state of a composite system, 
And you can, if you consider, if you take into account reduced states, then you give up into, uh, into proper mixtures. And this is impossible from a classical point of view. In other terms, from a logical point of view, the conjunction over the global state B cannot be represented as the conjunction of the states of the two separate parts. In other words, if you apply and to the uh, to Bell, now here is written as a projection. This is different from the application of the conjunction to the tensor product of the two reduced states, red one and red two. And this is strongly against the compositionality principle. So uh, this is the mathematical representation of the two of the two states. Now, but Toffel is uh, uh, transform precise pieces of information into precise pieces of information. So classical logic can be entirely developed uh, in a quite, uh, I repeat, uh, uh, in a quite masochistic way in the framework of quantum computation. But uh, if you take Toffoli, Toffoli cannot transform, uh, uh, cannot create superpositions. If you have a, a classical register, if you apply Toffoli to classical register, then you obtain again classical register. But of course, in quantum computation, it's important to use genuine quantum gates that transform classical inputs into genuine superposition. For example, the cat zero should be transformed into a, gen, a real superposition cat zero and cat one. Otherwise, you cannot use uh, you, the, the intrinsic parallelism of quantum computation. One important example of genuine quantum gate is the so-called Hadamard gate. Uh, uh, the Hadamard gate, uh, what is the behavior of the Hadamard gate? If you apply, for example, in the bidimensional case, Hadamard case to cat zero, you obtain a superposition of two, uh, with the same two amplitudes. And you remind you here, the probability is one half, one half, perfectly undetermined, undetermined indeterminate. And if you apply Adamar to the cat one, you obtain this, uh, 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 this vector. So the Adamar gate transform both bits, classical register, cat zero, cat one, into two distinct genuine superposition that might be true one or false with probability one. And this is the representation of the Adamar gate. And the, the main property of the Adamar gate if you apply twice the Hadamard gate, you get the identity. So Hadamard of Hadamard is just the identity. But if you apply just once, you have the opposite situation. Okay, uh, now any sequence of gates, so we have gates, and we can have a sequence, we, can, we, we may have a sequence of gates, uh, gives rise to a quantum logical circuit that can perform a quantum computation. I present only some, of course, some quantum gates which are particularly relevant for logical, uh, for logical investigations. But of course, uh, 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 quantum circuits are mathematical objects. So how to implement physically the gates that give rise to a given circuit? And it's clear that any particular implementation of a mathematical circuit C leads to a different kind of circuit. So a physical circuit of this kind that consists of a sequence of devices that can generally only approximate the original circuit. So the, the, the notion of approximate universality is very, is very important. As I mentioned before, as a, uh, uh, in the classical case, we have the, these three sets of uh, functional uh, uh, functionally universal set of gates. It's possible to express any other logic, classical logical gate in terms of these basic elements. This is not possible in quantum computation in principle if we, consign, if we confine ourselves to pure function, analytical, analytical uh, 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 universality. Just because of cardinality reason, because the number 
uh, of, uh, uh, of, a unitary, of unitary uh, operators is uncountable. So it's impossible to have a finite set that, uh, that, that allows us to express any other unitary operation in terms of these basics. I think we use, we can use the, the notion of a, a, a approximate universality. So a finite set of gates is approximately universal if and only if any quantum gate can be approximate up to any arbitrary accuracy by a quantum circuit that consists exactly of, of the convenient combination of elements of this primitive set. And the crucial results, and I think one of the most beautiful philosophical results in this field, is that the set consisting of these two gates, the Toffoli one, the Toffoli gate, and the Hadamard gate is approximately universal. In the sense that you can express any other, uh, 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 any other quantum gates in, in a convenient uh, combination of these two, uh, two gates. But so this is, why is this philosophical important? Because we know that Toffoli gate can perform exactly all classical reversible computation. So what, uh, what quantum computation needs to be quantum is the presence of the other market H. So H is just all that the Toffoli gate needs in order to reach quantum approximate universality, starting from classical full function universality provided by the Toffoli gate. And this is, I think, it's quite important. So also from a logical point of view, it's challenging to develop a logic based on these two uh, gates, Toffoli and Adama, which considered, at a certain extent, as a possible logic of quantum computation. Now, a, a more relaxing part. <laughs> so we see that we have a quantum, I, I briefly mentioned the quantum circuit as a mathematical object, possible implementation. Now, uh, and it's really, uh, an exciting period, exciting, the last uh, five or six years, very exciting, because many, uh, many research institutes, about also Google, uh, Getty, uh, and IBM, developed the so-called near-term quantum computers. For example, this is the IBM Q, I call briefly the quantum computer of IBM. And uh, you see here, you have our poor, poor classical computer here. We route down some line of codes in Python based on the package uh, QI's kit, which can be downloaded on the internet. Then we send our code, which is uh, a circuit, to a computer here. And this is a sort of um, micro microwave electronics mix signal down to a frequency that can be digitized. Then is after digitizing. This is uh, this is the IBM Q computer, very very cold, cold, very cold. Then uh, the computer. There is a measurement. Measurement pulses go down uh, and say coax after the control pulses. There is some measurements, at least one thousand and twenty four. I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. Then the results of this uh, uh, of this measurement uh, transform again. In, in a classical form, and then the result are sent back to our poor uh, uh, laptop over the cloud. And uh, so, what is the workflow of our, our Q, QI's kits? Design a quantum circuit that represents the problem we are considering, and we will see later in the Marisa's talk formulas. Execute, run experiments on different backends which include both system simulators, but system real system, and calculate summary statistics and visualize the results of experiment. This is a table of a comparison between the symbols we use and the IBM Q symbols. For example, this is the identity operators, this is our symbol, and this ID gate, the NOT gate, and they use the X, which is the first power matrix X here. Adama, fortunately, we use the same symbol, the control saw, the control not the uh, saw, they use a CX, control X gate, control not gate, 
And the toffoli is that control, control, not gate is a terminal operator. Then we have an extra logical uh, 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 tool, which is the measurement, which is not, of course, a logical, a quantum logical gate, because it's not reversible. It, the Z here stands for the Z basis, because measurements is performed on the computational basis that I introduced before. And of course, measurement is a, a, an irreversible operation. This is the reason why we don't have, we will not have measurements in the set of our uh, uh, gates. So this is just, uh, this is the, the IBM Q bouquet of quantum gates and the other interesting gates I, 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 I didn't mention, I didn't mention. But uh, let's see, let us run our, uh, our, our circuit. So you see here, you have, uh, mm, you have uh, uh, a quantum logical gates on IBM Q. You have the qubits, and the qubits are initialized to cat zero. So you have, here you have four line, three qubits, one, two, three qubits, initialized to zero with three wires. These are the quantum wires. And then we have a classical wires, which will keep the final result of the measure. So, in the first step here, the first layer, you apply Adama to the first wire, nothing to the other. Then, in the second layer, you apply uh, Adama, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, you, you, you do nothing in the, fir in the first, in, in the third, in the third wire, and we apply the negation. Then we apply here the XOR, the control knot, nothing to the third. And finally, in the final step, you have the application of Toffoli gate to the third line because it's a terminal conjunction. You see the Python uses the, this is a zero, one, two, a three. Uh, this is <coughs> because the, the counting starts from zero, not from one. So we have negation. Now we, you measure on the, uh, on the third line because it's the, it's the line that uh, carries all the, the results of the measure. So this is the result of the measurement on Y2, which is the Y3, so one, two, and three. The result of the measure. So three quantum wires and a classical Y, and a classical bit. For example, let us see how to create a superposition state. One over square two, cat zero plus cat one. So you have just one wire initialized to cat zero. You have, C, uh, you have a, um, a classical line. So you apply the first step, the first layer, Hadama, and then you measure. And this corresponds to the application of Hadama to the cat zero. Of course, if you want to apply Hadama to cat one, you have to put before the application of other map and addition. And now, this is the measurement and this is the experimental results, which I performed yesterday. And it's not very exciting because, uh, of course, the theoretical result, the expected theoretical result, is that both uh, CAT0 and CAT1 has probability one half, just because of the definition. And you have something which is not perfectly uh, after 1,024 uh, runs is not perfect. However, I perform again today just before the conference experiment, and it was beautiful because it is for exactly one half. And now you apply the, the crucial property of Hadamard. You see here, Hadamard uh, of Hadamard is the identity. And you see, if you have input zero and you apply uh, twice Hadamard, you have that the probability of zero is almost one. If you apply Hadamard of Hadamard at input one, you have that the probability of getting, obtaining one, cat one, is almost, is cl very close to one. But it's really amazing how to, to 
to, to develop, to build uh, a Bell state. Because a Bell state, you have, you need, of course, two wires, two qubits. You apply Adama to the first layer here, Adama to this, uh, uh, the identity of the second wire, then the, the second layer, then the negation to the first, to the, <coughs> to the first, <coughs> sorry, wire, and the identity, then XOR, and then you measure. And if you apply, for example, this circuit, this is the representation, to cat zero, cat zero, you obtain ju just the Bell state. One over the square root of two, zero, zero, plus one, one. And uh, if you perform the experiment, then you, the expected result is that you obtain cat zero with one half, it is true, it's true, the truth is one half, and the falsity is one half. And exactly what happens, also here, you see that cat zero is close to one, and cat one is close to, uh, and cat, and this, uh, the cat one, the probability is close to, to one. So, these are just examples of, uh, of uh, the application, how you can develop uh, quantum computation, our circuit, uh, logical circuit, but not only logical circuit, uh, how to, uh, you can implement this, uh, uh, this state. Just to finish here, I want to, uh, sorry, uh, just to, to finish just a moment here. I want to show, yeah, I want to show here, I, I have no time to perform the real experiment because I performed this experiment on the IBM quantum computer in Melbourne. And but I think now it's quite, uh, it's quite busy and crowded. But you see here just an example of the code that I wrote on the IBM console. This is the, the Python package you write the circuit, and then you, you get a circuit here. And then you have, again, the circuit here. Then this is a simulation, a simulation of, uh, of uh, a classical simulation. This is, uh, uh, a, again, a simulation. And this is the real IBM Q with 16 qubits Melbourne quantum computer which I, you see here the, the time that I performed today. And these are the results, the perfect. The, the pink results are the, the results of the simulator and the blue results are the results per really performed by the device. So this is, uh, uh, is a very, uh, 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 with a few line of codes, we can use this uh, fantastic uh, computer. So thank you for, for your attention. Thank you.